Hey guys, Adam Savage in my cave, and recently the Tested team and I got to visit the legendary Henson Studios in Hollywood, and as you can imagine, we were all beside ourselves. Henson Studios is most famous, of course, for their mastery at making the most amazingly expressive hand puppets. But it has also become known as a place of major technological innovation, including digital puppetry. I met with Brian Henson to see a demo of the Henson Digital Performance System, a mind-blowing and completely unique interface that marries traditional puppeteering with performance capture to bring the Henson Company's craft to the digital world. Seriously, this thing is crazy and you've got to see it. Well, you're watching the video, you're going to see it. Here we go. Brian, tell me what we're looking at here. All right, so this, this is um, the digital puppetry system. Yeah. And um, this all started when we were doing dinosaurs. So as we got to, to the end of dinosaurs, which was an incredibly ambitious show, and we yeah. would shoot every episode in, in five days, but five very long days, like often Friday, because you had a 12 hour turnaround every night, often on Friday we'd come to work at four o'clock in the afternoon oh and wrap it Saturday at, uh, at four in the morning, and, um, or five or six in the morning. Yeah. It was really ambitious, and we started thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could do what we were doing in dinosaurs, but do it, do it digitally, so that we didn't have the big heavy costumes and the, and the suits and stuff like that. Could we control a digital character the way we're controlling dinosaurs? So the dinosaurs on set were controlled like this by yeah, so, Waldo's? Yeah, so this part of the control, this was all developed on dinosaurs. So we have one that we call the stick control, uh, the stick control was the first computer-assisted animatronic control that we developed, and I first we I first did it on the character, the storyteller's dog, mm -hmm. um, and it used to, and I'd wear it on my belt. Oops, on that hand, and I had my other hand in the puppet's head, and so that was the stick control. This one started as we called it the Waldo control, and actually this one went all the way back to the first Muppet movie. Yeah. So when when Kermit was riding a bicycle, he had a very simple mechanical head and with a mouth, and there was an early version of that control. Um, and then this control got upgraded and upgraded so that, so this is basically a hand puppet that, yeah. that Drew, this is Drew Massey, yeah. and he, ba Hi. he basically has like a hand puppet control on that side, but, it, but now it's so sophisticated it tracks all the movement of all of your fingers. So he has effectively a helicopter control stick, yeah. which yeah. has been designed to, to have as many controls as possible on one hand, and then he has uh, uh, like a hand puppet head uh, mechanical control there. So that's what we used on dinosaurs to control the faces. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, of course, then there was an actor inside the, the suit. Yeah. So what we do mostly with this system, Drew right now has a, a character that he's got complete control of, but what we most often do is we bring this rig onto the motion capture stage and then we have one puppeteer who's wearing a, a motion capture suit who's performing the body oh. of the character and then and then the other puppeteer is voicing and controlling the head of so the, the character. The mocap actor is there for the gross body movements yeah. and motion around the space. Yes. And then the puppeteer is doing all the fine. Although we call them really both puppeteers because the one in who's controlling the body is still looking. We put screens all around the stage so right. that they can see what the computer, what the animated version of them is so that they're not just acting. Yeah. Instead, they're, watch, they're watching themselves all the time. So, so in the motion, the person doing the body might end up, you know, sort of moving like the, doing really wow. weird things, yeah, but yeah. it's because they're just looking for visual feedback from the screens as to what they're doing. And then, and then the two of them will end up so in sync, like Drew, you and Misty, I mean, they can just totally improvise for yeah. hours. Yeah. Really? And Misty can read Drew's mind. She knows exactly where he's going. Um, and it's, they did Sid the Science Kid together. They did Sid. And it was just amazing the way she could mind read you. She knew exactly where you were going. Yep. Uh, it was, um, yeah, so amazing. So, so basically, we started with uh, a, a proprietary viewer. We, we got the system working in the mid-90s, but we were working with computers that were Onyx 8s or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I remember then. those. And they were a million bucks a pop. Yeah, yeah. And because we, were, <laughs> because we were doing such sophisticated stuff, they gave us like two or three of them sure. to, to use. 
And then, you know, then they said, wow, it's really amazing. Are you going to buy five or six? I was like, no, <laughs> actually, we can't really afford any. So, so, for, a while, so for a while, we stopped. Yeah. We had to just stop the development and wait like five years until the computers were no longer a million dollars, but were now right. 80,000 or so. And once they got down there, then we were able to start really working this way. And um, originally, we had a proprietary viewer where it was a quite a low, low resolution image, but still plenty of detail. The reason why we need a very real time image, we need there to be no lag in no the delay. system, no delay, because right. otherwise the puppeteers can't work. Right. And that's always been true right from the beginnings. And so we already had a leg up when it came to real time animation, because we were always thinking in real time, and it has to be real time. We can't, if there's more than a six frame delay, yeah. it becomes pretty impossible to puppeteer. Right. So, um, so we had a viewer that was lower resolution and we've just recently upgraded with the Unreal Engine. So we work now with the Unreal Game Engine and now we have a really very good image. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm a really good image. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see this is, so Drew's really mostly controlling the head. He's got some pedals that are, that are doing wings and body, and some simple body positions, but really to do a character like this, you, you need two performers. You, you need really another, do. Another performer doing the body. Yeah. But um, I've, you know, I've got basic things like, you know, oh, there's my rock. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da. That's, that's the line you get. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I introduce people to my rock and, um, you know, my, my fire. There, there it is. But Whee! you can see, this is really, it's really quite good it's resolution. Really, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, you know what? It's actually the, the fireflies, sparks that are the least effective in there. But this is actually a really good quality image. You could almost, you, you re, we could broadcast this. So now we actually are finally at a place where we could go live television. Well, we that's, this is amazing. You do live TV. You've been working on this technology, you said, since since... Since the Muppet movie. Uh, the very first one would have been the Muppet movie in 76, and we started using them um, more regularly in Fraggle Rock. My yeah. dad would do it to get, because he couldn't afford the puppeteers. So in the Fraggles, <laughs> when you'd see like 20 of them all singing, they would be ganged in, in five, so that one puppeteer would be using one wow. control. And it would be working that one, that one, that one, and that oh, one. Oh, never five in a row. No, oh, never right, right, right yeah, next yeah. to each other. And yeah. they'd be sprinkled about. And so that, you know, three puppeteers could work 15 background singing fraggles. So we actually started using th that Waldo control uh, pretty extensively there. And Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, they had to, they, the, those two, Ma and, and Emmett Otter are on the boat and Ma is singing. And in the wide shots, they're fully, they're fully mechanical. Those are real early uh, as well. What I love about this is, I mean, famously Pixar worked carefully writing software so that people who didn't know computers could animate the characters for their films. You, I was coming here thinking I would make this point that you guys are doing the same thing here, but it's actually more like you guys understand how to make characters come to life and you've, you've come up with a digital way to give them all of this range of motion. Yeah, well, it actually, it starts with the basic skills of a hand puppeteer. Right. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, the, the traditional hand puppeteering over your head is actually still the most difficult. So when somebody can really get good at that, they can always get good at this, which oh, is wow. very interesting. Yeah. Whereas some of them that can't quite get really good at this can actually still get really good at this, which is odd. I mean, there's just <laughs> something about how specifically you can see every little movement that you're doing in it and yeah. a hand puppet, but, but this is using what are a hand puppeteer's skills in terms of bringing something to life. And in our company, I always say, when we're puppeteering, we don't think about our hand, we don't think about our puppet. Right. We, we look at a monitor, that, and there's a puppet on the monitor, and we make the puppeteer do stuff, the puppet do stuff. And then you, so eventually you're in the training, you're forgetting that anything is happening. All the here. things that you're doing. Here. Yeah, all yeah. this has to happen automatically as you're deciding what that puppet does. Right. And, and it's the same thing is happening here, but at a more sophisticated level. Drew really is just watching that character. He's deciding what he's doing. He'll never look down at his hands. Yeah. You'll never see yeah. him look down. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so it, th that's, the, that's our yeah. approach. So that I, was for me. I imagine that like 
15 years ago, you would have said to me, you know, someday we'll be able to have him operating a live, highly rendered yeah. CG character. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. What is, what is, are there ways in which you're thinking about improving this for 20 years from now? I don't know. We've gone up a really long way now. So yeah. we, we have the digital puppetry studio in there. and We've got the biggest motion capture volume in Los Angeles for sure. Amazing. And we, we make shows like Sid the Science Kid and uh, Splash and Bubbles and Word Parties on Netflix. And there are three camera operators yeah. operating virtual cameras. Uh, we can do a live switch. Um, we can do up to six characters simultaneously. So, and, and each, the, each camera operator can repos has like 25 reposition keys on their board. So we can actually shoot a seven minute scene with 60 camera positions and do it in real time and, wow. go, and go right through it. If we're ready to rehearse this yeah, in that yeah, much. Yeah. Um, so we're, really the whole idea is we're doing 3D animation with, the, with not just the efficiency of a multi-camera, um, sitcom, but even better because right. it's, it's not proscenium because the cameras can't see each other. So we can do two shots. Oh we can God, do our two course. over the shoulders at the same time because the cameras are invisible to each other. So it's not the pr the blocking isn't proscenium blocking. It's like single camera blocking, but multi camera shoot. It's very it's kind of very wonderfully sophisticated. And now that the image quality has now been brought up, we we really are about to be at a level of efficiency where making a 3D animated show is significantly more efficient than making a live action show. That's amazing. Do you ever bring in outside directors and watch their eyes light up when they realize what they can do? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. They also have a mocap uh, camera for handheld yeah. shots we also, in the volume, yeah. Yeah. which oh, is really amazing. fun. Yeah, so it has... want to be handheld. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. And that's, a, that's also a great look. And you can soften the handheld so it's more like a steady cam. Yeah. Um, what are the sort of things that still go wrong with these? I know you don't have problems with radio interference anymore and other stuff like that, but what are the issues that still plague these rigs potentially? Um, oh, that's not really. They're perfect. All <laughs> <laughs> Fair no. uh, well, all of these, all of these sensors, these these uh, position sensor sensors are still basically potentiometers. Sure. They get they get rough spots on them mm -hmm. and dead mm -hmm. spots on them. Um, so, so contact you know, cleaner in there. Yeah. yeah. No, so these have to be kind of maintained and overhauled yeah, yeah. Uh, every so often. When we're in the motion capture arena, you know, the, com the computer gets confused as to which markers are which. So, so a character will be walking across the room and it will just suddenly turn inside out. <laughs> like that. It'll just be walking and go floop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a problem. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. yeah, I agree. But we're still working on it. But it's getting more and more and more stable. Yeah. So you're getting motion on the bending of your fingers too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's a, that's how I do my ease. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I do it on it. Hey. Nice Billy really Idol up? lip curl there. Yeah. It's <laughs> more, more, more. So we don't have the rights to that, do we? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just one I don't think I've you learned one lyric sure is fine. I'm not sure that you sang it with enough melody for it to matter. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm sure do it really gravelly. <laughs> yeah. What I love is, so I was obsessed when I was younger watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, watching the puppeteers use rigs like this. Mm -hmm. And because it's VHS, I couldn't see the rigs very specifically. This is exactly what I imagined in my mind's eye. Yeah. That it was all of this complexity in that. Yeah, I'm not sure we had the gyro outer rig yet. Oh, so just, turning your hand in the, it, there's a, oh, wow. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't. Big ring bearing. Yeah, now we worked real hard to try to put the axis of the control right at the axis of your oh, wrist. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't think there was this either. I, and there's a whole <gasps> joystick Yeah, we added here. that I mean, oh, whole wow. additional there's, control there. There's a lot of extra. And Those it's all, it, it, for you, it all becomes autonomic. It's all, you, you can jump right into this rig and you're in a flow state puppeting. Yeah, and the great thing about it is is that every puppeteer programs it to his or her own preference. Yeah. So oh, all yeah. of, uh, everything that's assigned, I assigned yeah. pretty much In terms much of ramp myself. ups and ramp downs and what you yeah. were talking about. Like, it's all like sliders. Like yeah, you'll yeah. have a slider that, 
let's say is the ex an expression. So you might des you can design an expression, you know, with the eyes right, right. in a certain way, and you can well, design yeah. it with every individual movement, and then then you can ass you assign that to one of these controls so that you can relax the control and the expression <clears throat> goes away, and then you engage the control and then engages that expression. Wow. Yeah. Or, and, or, and you or say the all the puppet, you can, you can program from scratch. A lot yeah. of the puppeteers work with a base program sure. that, There's, that yeah. Drew or one of the other um, very experienced puppeteers will have set up as a, as a base program and then and then program on top of that. And yeah. you were saying you can tell instantly when you step into someone else's Sometimes. program? Sometimes, yeah, oh yeah, well, yeah. We, we you can tell instant, instantly when it's not yours. Yeah, when it's right. not yours, yeah. You go in and you're like, this is broken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I was saying even, even with how people set the neutrals, sometimes when you snap to another program, I'll be like, oh, that's that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is really beautiful. And I love the way you've translated what you've always been doing, which is hand movements to create character to such a sophistication to just make this so simple. Drew, yeah. you're gonna help Adam uh, get in there? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, so like a yeah, standard four-handed Muppet, my pinky and ring finger are together? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, well, that's when you're doing, yeah, live hands Muppet, you're right. Yeah, you know, and it's also there. just, most people don't have enough control over their pinky, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, middle right. finger there. All right. Yeah, yeah. And those two pinky there. finger there. there you go. And, and the thumb, thumb right in the thumb cup there. Okay. Now the thumb also has a, I don't know if I assigned anything to it, but it waggles back and forth and that's an extra all right. Oh yeah, look, I think that's jaw forward and back. I don't know. Anyway. I noticed you were using the thumb back and forth. Yeah, there we go. No, but he, well, see, now I, with me, I program, I always program that so that it does just make the lip go back and forth. Yeah. On side to oh. side. I did that which on... You, you know what you, you can do. I did that on Sid, so every time he stood there, he would do this little... Mm. <laughs> and then this and, oh, and this is... Mm -hmm. All right. And then... Oh, like, is that backwards? Right. That's backwards. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me uh, flip this around like that. Oh, that's much better. And then I'm gonna strap in on like so. There you go. Oh wow! Now and this this everywhere. is eye direction. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. And this is his entire body forward and back. So if he's getting too close, you can just pull back and it'll. Oh my god! I can't believe this is like driving a stick <laughs> times fifty. It's fun, right? Oh, and there's this, oh, he gives a the, thumbs up? There's a thumbs up, yeah, nice. I, I program that in as expression. Now, do the thumbs up, and then and then click this, and he does a thumbs down. If you're on oh. your, your, your pinky finger, just press that forward. Yeah. That's oh, for, that's for gladiator fights, you know, if you're, <laughs> you want somebody to die. <laughs> oh, right, okay, Whoa. there we go. <laughs> and of course, when you start working a character like this, you. The program evolves and evolves. It starts more simple, and then the more days that you're shooting with the character, the more the you get, deeper you go into this, so that it really does get very complex. If if you've been if you're performing a character for like 10, 12 weeks, the program gets really complex. Wow. Yeah, and then you can assign different expressions to trigger at different times, and yeah. have whole different programs for and, and, different and scenes. Like if you have two expressions that are so extreme that yeah. when they mix, it rips the skin, you oh. can then have a mitigating, what do we call it? A nuancing. New, a nuancing so that if two expressions go at the same time, they can't go to a certain extreme that would rip the skin. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, this, I'm so overwhelmed by the amount of movement that is required, but I can also see how I, how much time, I mean, now it takes you very little time, I'm sure, to get used to a new character. But, like, what kind of training do you, time do you give yourself? Yeah, I mean, by this time, I mean, after Sid the Science Kid, I had so many hours on the system that I I got it down to where I could do a program in, like, a couple hours. Wow. Like a usable. A usable, basic program. Basic, 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 yeah. basic program. I could imagine just, but are, are you make, releasing a consumer version of this anytime soon? <laughs> the price tag would be great. Right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to remove my hands from this somehow without harming it. Oh, it's oh yeah, You're, it's it's very sturdy. My God, thank you. That was amazing. Yeah, for sure. Wow, it's just so beautiful. Can I come in bed for a couple of days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll show okay, you how to good. use it. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, this is, this is, I, I love the progression. Seriously, this, like, watching the Puppeteer's Puppet, that Ninja Turtles film, watching behind the scenes footage, was the first time I thought about this, and I've been obsessed with it ever since, so it's lovely to see it at such a high level of refinement. 
it's interesting because it has all of the imperfections of acting. Whereas most 3D animation is perfection, right? Because right. they've, they've keyframed it, keyframed it, keyframed it. And it's like the Pixar folks were famous for saying, now you have, okay, it can't, now it's too accurate. Now you have to make it look spontaneous. Yeah, and, yeah. and what's great about this system is it is performing. And, then, and we, they will do unexpected things. And we'll even do things like, okay, guys, we got that scene. Now do another take and just have a little more fun with it. Right. And you just get a completely different performance or a character might fall on their way into the room and then get back up and dust themselves off. And it was all uh, uh, unexpected, <laughs> you know, and we would use, we can use that stuff. So, so the shows themselves have a real feeling of it, it really happening. Well, and I think in lots of like news stories about coming technologies, people often take the easy road of talking about how like technology is the death of creativity in some way. Or that you know, c computer programming something is somehow going to take, but you're only adding to the creative it's all just possibilities. Tools. It's all just tools yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are of course below, but it includes all sorts of perks, and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind-the-scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.